You are watching Travel World Online. Budget 2023. Government focuses on travel and tourism infrastructure. 50 destinations to be developed. Ayato welcomes announcements for tourism in Union Budget 2023-24. Tourism Minister launches Visit India Year 2023 campaign. Tourism industry contributes to the highest economic growth in Portugal in 35 years. MMT records highest bookings in quarter 3 of financial year 23 with 64% growth. Travstar's global group signs packed with Constance Hotels and Resorts for Properties in Three Nations. Union Tourism Minister G. Kishan Reddy on Tuesday launched the Visit India Year 2023 campaign to encourage inbound travel to the country which is currently holding the presidency of G20. The minister also launched a logo of the campaign that draws inspiration from visual representation of Namaste. The tourism ministry said G20 presidency presents a fantastic opportunity to highlight the country's tourism offering. The Visit India Year 2023 campaign is an initiative of the tourism ministry. Tourism, the country offers immense attraction for domestic as well as foreign tourists. There is a large potential to be tapped in tourism. The sector holds huge opportunities for jobs and entrepreneurship for youth in particular. Promotion of tourism will be taken up on mission mode with active participation of states, convergence of government programs and public-private partnerships. Critical transport infrastructure projects for last and first mile connectivity for pro ports, coal, steel, fertilizer, and food grain sectors have been identified. They will be taken up on priority with investment of 75,000 crores, including 15,000 crore from private sources. 50 additional airports, heliports, water aerodromes, and advanced landing grounds will be revived for improving regional air connectivity. Sustainable cities for tomorrow. The newly established Infrastructure Finance Secretariat will assist all stakeholders for more private investment in infrastructure, including railways, roads, urban infrastructure, and power which are predominantly depend on public resources. The harmonized master list of infrastructure will be reviewed by an expert committee for recommending the classification and financing firm framework suitable for Amarth Kal. Railways, a capital outlay of 2.40 lakh crores has been provided for the railways. The government will promote their unique conservation values through Amrit Darohar, a scheme that will be implemented over the next three years to encourage optimal use of wetlands and enhance biodiversity, carbon stock, ecotourism opportunities, and income generation for local communities. Coastal shipping. Coastal shipping will be promoted as the energy efficient and lower cost mode of transport, both for passengers and freight, through PPP mode with viability gap funding. Honorable Speaker, sir, with an integrated and innovative approach, at least 50 destinations will be selected through challenge mode. In addition, in addition to aspects such as physical connectivity, virtual connectivity, tourist guides, high standards for food streets, and tourist security, all the relevant aspects would be made available on an app to enhance tourist experience. Every destination would be developed as a complete package. The focus of development of tourism would be on domestic as well as foreign tourists. Sector-specific skilling and entrepreneurship development will be dovetailed to achieve the objectives of Deko Apna Desh initiative. This was launched as an appeal by the Honorable Prime Minister to the middle class. 
to prefer domestic tourism over international tourism. The integrated development of theme-based tourist circuits, the Swadesh Dar Darshan scheme, was also launched. Under the vibrant villages program, tourism infrastructure and amenities will be facilitated in border villages. Unity Mall. States will be encouraged to set up a unity mall in their state capital or most prominent tourism center or the financial capital for promotion and sale of their one district, one product and GI products and other handicraft products and for providing space for such products of all other states as well. MSMEs are growth engines of our economy. Micro enterprises with turnover up to two crore of rupees and certain professionals with turnover of up to 50 lakh rupees can avail the benefit of presumptive taxation. I propose to provide enhanced limits of three crore and 75 lakh respectively to the taxpayers whose cash receipts are no. Thank you, Anand. talk about travel industry as a whole I think the budget is good in certain ways because travel tourism needs to survive for long term and it needs to survive with the right infrastructure I remember all these years uh, since the last 20 years the only thing that we used to crib about is there's no infrastructure that's why we are not getting inbound okay or we don't want to travel domestically we want to travel out this was a crying word to the government many many for last so many years since leaving a couple of years and maybe now so now the, that's the excuse we used to always give. Why aren't the numbers up? So I think this is a real opportunity that we are getting in this country. And I think the vision of our uh, government and the Honorable Prime Minister is really uh, commendable that at least they are building on the industry. So our one crore is closed. We can't stop it because you don't have infrastructure. Nahi hai. Infrastructure is there. The only thing is the infrastructure, like they've given 22.4 uh, lakh crores of railways. I think it's a huge opportunity to create new circuits. Now you see and you find it very wonderful. So we have a lot to talk. I think it's time we stop criticizing the government also. I think that is what I've always believed in. Because like I say, we need to be self-resilient. So when the prime minister, when the finance minister actually opened a speech by saying, you know, uh, that uh, tourism, I mean, she said it in the first few lines, that tourism is a very important aspect of our country's growth. So that was the first thing that said that they are looking at tourism. Yes, they are not looking at tourism to only structuring for the travel agent and the industry, which I feel they should have because I think our demands are demands are something which can be met and they are not such high demands. We are not asking for the sun, the moon, the stars. We are asking for something which is actually feasible. And they should have looked into that so that we could have got certain rebates. And we are asking for very little. You know, we, we during COVID time, we were asking for huge funds. We've stopped asking for that. But now we're asking just for ease of business and also to make us compatible doing outbound business and inbound business. Because I I, I know India is the plethora. It, India needs to be promoted in every way. And I feel the best culture, cuisine, everything of tourism exists in our country. The weathers. I mean, there's no country which has all the beautiful weathers. You know, we have everything going in this country. The beaches, the hills, the mountains. What do we not have? But the only thing we are looking for is a little bit of a hold, hand holding for the ease of business. So if we were asking a reduction in TCS, I know there is no clarity, but we are talking if it's 20% clarity, it's a humongous, clarity, a humongous rise. Even if it's for 50 lakhs or 100 lakhs, that means you are actually telling people that the ones who want luxury or they want experiences or they want conferencing or mice to stay in India. But will they stay in India? You know, uh, or are we creating a dual market again, a double market of black and white again? You know, we were thinking of removing all these, uh, you know, wrong ways of working. But are you bringing it back? So there are a lot of ways because people are going to still find a way to get out. People are still going to find a way of doing business. So we want that you should incentivize mice, conferences, weddings in our own country. Make taxes low that you still gain. You, we don't actually sometimes I feel we don't want credit inputs. Why are we giving giving us credit for tourism sector? Don't have any credit inputs. You want to make two percent out of the entire business? Take two percent. Leave it alone. You know TCS. Why are you putting TCS? You are making us more expensive. 
people are st stop buying from us people will start buying from others you look at the indian travel agents they are today all opening offices in dubai abu dhabi maldives wherever they can sri lanka because why because we are more expensive why are you depriving that money that's coming to you away from your own country that's all what we are saying and it makes life easier and it you we sustain the travel industry sustains here the travel in industry is becoming difficult for them to sustain and believe you me what is the infrastructure for i'm saying it in very simple words for everyone to hear why is why is the infrastructure being created so that the traveler comes who is going to sell it to the traveler it's the travel agents if every traveler is not so smart to get on a portal or go to the website of mot and say hey we've got it all they still need a face when they land in india they still need a connect they still want someone to support them that if something goes wrong we are there for them so i think the travel industry is not going anywhere the travel agents are not travel advisors travel agents tour operators you know they are not going anywhere because they have to be there but i think a little bit of uh, government support is what is required and that's all what i talk about government support making ease of business rest believe you me we have the capacity we have the capability we have the knowledge we know how to handle if you tell give us a figure that you want so much of inbound and so much of uh, domestic tourism give us a challenge we'll accept it but you accept our little bit small you know small things that you can easily give it to us so that's the first thing that comes to my mind very very strongly and i wish uh, our finance minister and our honorable prime minister would reach there also because we are going to keep sending our list we've done that every time pre budget sending them our wish list uh, nothing is picked up concurrent list for the industry status industry status not only for hospitality for the entire industry we don't have uh, we don't have collaterals to give you not even to the bank to take a loan or as hoteliers have it to get to be you know getting that industry status we are the service providers how do you actually bring us into the purview of being a service provider but then let us make money where do we go so i think this is where the where the government should talk to us hear us out and say this is these are our pain points can you please look into it we are a part of you we are a part of your country we are a part of our country we are the citizens of this country please give us that benefit and that's all what i ask for you know let us i one thing i'm going to say it here maybe from your platform you can loudly say it everywhere please keep us in the ministry of tourism as a private stakeholder sitting on a chair to guide you there we don't want any money from you but let us sit on a chair give us a desk so we could be the connect between the travel and the ministry so when the finance minister in her opening remarks uh, mentioned tourism and its potential uh, we were all very hopeful that finally we would see some direct tangible benefits for the sector so while the uh, budget has a lot in terms of uh, long term and medium term uh, benefits you know things like uh, greater infrastructure development last mile uh, connectivity uh, the the idea of unity malls and the proposal to develop uh, all tourism sites holistically and in mission mode what we were looking for and what we had hoped earnestly for was that an industry that has borne the worst of the pandemic and was beginning to come out of it would be given some tangible micro direct benefits or support that has not happened we were hoping for a rationalization of gst we were hoping for a reduction in the tcs which makes us uh, uncompetitive vis-a-vis -vis foreign operators what we have instead is a very steep hike in the tcs of course it is for a much higher threshold a 50 lakh uh, outbound tour package would attract tcs at the rate of 20% so this might not affect individuals uh, very much but it will definitely have an impact on institutional spending on travel so uh, i think uh, you know uh, some of the things that we had hoped for uh, we haven't got but i guess we have no option uh, this is an industry that has stood on its feet during the pandemic this is an industry that is resilient and i think we have no option but to soldier on and hope that uh, we shall be able to uh, reach and uh, get some uh, tangible benefits for this industry in the coming months or the year the economy is is in much better shape than many other countries and that is a positive sign if we had only had some more direct support i think the industry would have been very happy 
as the uh, union budget for the year 2023-24 is concerned, uh, after a long time, there have been some mention, rather three times mention about tourism. Uh, so at least there is some thought about tourism with the government. Now, if we talk about some of the highlights, uh, as I said, first of all, uh, uh, the finance minister took the time uh, to mention uh, tourism. Number one, number two, domestic and in, and foreign tourists were discussed at a number of points. Thirdly, the tourism should be taken up on mission mode, um, and I hope something happens. Uh, they are they are talking about coordination with the uh, state governments, uh, convergence of program and public private partnership in tourism to taken up to be taken up. Now, how it will take be taken up? What will happen? That all needs to be seen. Uh, important is fifty additional uh, airports, helipads, and seaports. Sea airports uh, are being redeveloped, which are with them. And most probably they will have uh, Oran, Oran flights from there uh, whenever they are ready. Uh, about 7,900 crores have been allocated to the railways, for which I think we will have many, many Vande Bharats and better connectivity uh, to uh, various places in India by rain, which is very important. This is like they are, they are trying to develop 50 new destinations or new circuits. So when new circuits will come, definitely there will be something going on in that. And uh, I'm quite hopeful that you, those new circuits uh, will benefit. Like Statue of Unity is a new, new circuit. And the amount of visitors, both domestic and foreign, which are going there is, is a large, large place. Hotels have come up. Trains are running. Uh, road is there. So the, these kind of things will benefit in the long run when the 50 destinations come in. Now, the basic point is that we have still not seen the exact budget. Our saying is that what is the budget for out promotion uh, for, to attract foreign tourists? How much budget has been allotted and when? I did hear uh, the respected finance minister someone saying that we will do, do, do advertisement and uh, promotions abroad. How will that happen? When will that happen? That is yet to be seen. Um, what is the budget allocation? How much money has been allocated for those purposes? So once that happens, then we will know as to what the position is and what should we expect uh, from this budget. Thank you, Sharmaji, for inviting me uh, for this you know, the budget you know, the analysis. The proposed budget in the parliament by the finance ministry. In fact, you know, uh, under this Amrit Kal, where exactly uh, India is celebrating the Amrit Kal and the uh, 75th anniversary, independence anniversary, and uh, we had a lot of expectations uh, from the finance ministry and some of the, from the government. Uh, as we were always, you know, demanding that, you know, tourism is a very important. Uh, sector as it always used to contribute almost about 9.4 percent in the GDP and there is a lot of employment generation and revenue generation not for the country but even I mean for the country and also for the states and uh, through the you know the youth because India is a very youth country and it's a very young country almost 67 percent uh, the country is uh, under the 35 years of age. So in that context, we wanted that, yes, of course, they have in the budget, the youth power, they have utilized on this thing. But under the Amrit Kal, they have now considered about that domestic tourism mainly, and we are thankful to the finance minister and the government of India uh, for considering the domestic tourism, which they have really considered this time very well as the promoting of the 50 destinations and uh, working with the states uh, tourism boards uh, and the skill management is, is very very important factor 
uh, for India because India is has 69 percent almost with the villages, which is the rural areas. And under this area, rural areas, it is very very important to educate the locals, to educate the villages to their choice of the destinations. Definitely, connectivity is a very very important factor. And uh, this time, the budget is proposed for outlay of near yeah, 2.4 uh, uh, lakh crores. So of course, they are looking for that, you know, the factors for that border tourism, which is another thing which they have really introduced as per the Prime Minister's, you know, the instructions that which we were seeing for the last so many years that border tourism has to be, and particularly ADI is looking for the border tourism, and they have already requested the Ministry, Ministry of Tourism to promote the world tourism <clears throat> as well as the skill management. Yes, of course, a lot of times we have put the letters to all the state tourism boards to do some kind of a state specialist programs for the tour operators so that they are really skilled about that, that what product and what kind of a you know, potential a, a particular state has. So that's very, very important and we have been uh, asking and uh, requesting all the states to do some kind of a promotion. So it will give a boost to the tourism and the domestic tourism. But as regards the inbound and outbound, I think nothing has been done, which is very, very disappointing. Uh, they have done the TCS from 5 to 20 percent, which is really a very disheartening and very, very uh, disappointing for the factor because now the outbound will be totally out now. I think the government doesn't want to promote the outbound. They just want to uh, promote the inbound and the domestic. That's their main idea which we are looking uh, as per the proposed budget. Because, you know, putting this pressure on the, you know, the travel agent, the tour operators, this will not really help the tour operators to sell the outbound. What will happen now, the only the outsiders, outside India, travel agent, they will take benefit out of that because their packages will be rather cheaper than the Indian packages. See, the budget is promising. Promising for a couple of reasons. First is that there is a pure recognition of tourism as a as a very, uh, very important tool in the economic growth. And this is a fact that we've been trying to drive into the government for many, many years. So, you know, the finance minister spoke about uh, regional connectivity, domestic tourism, about, uh, 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 you know, creating more and more avenues for tourists. Uh, he sh uh, spoke about tourist guides. Um, so I think from that perspective, it's very promising. There's been some infusion of funds in with for the MSMEs, a 9,000 crore infusion. That also is uh, promising. Then, so too much of uh, in a, a you know, focus on infrastructure development, which which is uh, you know largely uh, connected to the growth of tourism, which is uh, in terms of uh, aerodromes, heliport, and uh, advanced landing facilities. I think all of them really augur well if you look at the tourism landscape and the overall picture and on a on a long scale vision. So I think in a long term vision, this looks like a very, very promising and, uh, you know, efforts have been made to ensure that we have a long term goal and um, the potential potential of uh, domestic tourism, we all know we have so much over here and that we've been flagging off to the government that there is so much and we've not done enough to exploit it. So I think this is a step towards that direction. You know, short-term requirements were there. So, of course, I can talk about disappointments and there are many, you know, that but we have to look at the positives. The positives are that unless there is a right infrastructure and right roadmap, we will never achieve the targets that we are thinking about reaching a three trillion economy or, you know, looking at FTAs at what, you know, any other, you know, Western countries are looking at. I think for that, the internal infrastructure the tourist attractions, infusion of funds, all of them are very, very relevant and important. And I think from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. You know, other than our two, three things about reforms in GST and, um, you know, tourism, to bring tourism to the concurrent list, uh, I think most of the issues have been dealt with. Of course, there's always been an issue on the way the Ministry of Tourism works and how the states 
at the at the state levels cooperate with that but i think there's the the budget speech very clearly um, showed the intention to work towards um, regional connectivity in which the states are going to benefit and states will also play a vital role so i think it's a promising budget and if this is carried through it is in the next 5 to 10 years we'll really see exponential growth of tourism in our country and i think all players will stand to benefit so i think it's a very very good start you are watching travel world online